Yeah, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this time together. As we meet for the last time uh, for this year, thank you so much for what we have learned so far this year from your word. We pray, Lord Jesus, that the more we learn from your word, um, the stronger we believe in you, the more we learn from your word, the greater our love for you. I pray that you build us up, Lord Jesus, in our love for you. That this knowledge will not just be mind knowledge, but that it will help us to grow in holiness of character and in Christ likeness. And we ask this in your son's name. Amen. So uh, I want to welcome all of you to the week seven, lecture seven uh, of this uh, course, uh, which is the history of uh, the kingdom of God. <clears throat> and so um, this is the last time we meet uh, for this, uh, for, for our course. And I want to thank you so much. You've, um, you've been able to uh, endure uh, until now, uh, endure this week. Thank you very much. You know, it's, uh, it can be quite difficult to be committed on a week by week basis to attend these lectures. But today we want to answer the question we, we want to answer from uh, our lecture is this. What are the purposes of the missionary journeys of Paul? So what are the purposes of the missionary journeys of Paul? As you read through the Acts of the Apostle, you'll be able to see that Paul, uh, there were uh, 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 three missionaries, missionaries journey of Paul, the Apostle. Um, but some people say that there was a fourth journey. Uh, the fourth journey, according to, um, to the Acts of the Apostle, was Paul's journey to Rome, uh, to be imprisoned in Rome. Uh, and the book finishes in chapter 28 with Paul uh, being in Rome uh, as a prisoner, but he lives in his own rented house. Um, so he's, he's a prisoner, but uh, there's, there's not a lot of restrictions uh, put upon him. Um, in terms of his freedom. Anyway, so what are the purposes of the missionary journeys of Paul? And I, um, I gather uh, 10, 10 reasons why Paul uh, was on his missionary's journey. Three missionary journey, missionary's journey. Um, the fourth one was to Rome. Number one, Paul started off uh, to take relief, that is some assistance, uh, in the form of maybe money and food for needy believers uh, in Jerusalem. Now, there was a famine. This was before the first missionary journey of Paul. Uh, there was a, a famine uh, in the Roman world, and everyone uh, was affected. Uh, we read about it, uh, about it in Acts chapter 11 uh, and verses 27 to 30. In those days, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Agabus stood up and predicted by the spirit that there would be a severe famine throughout the Roman world. This took place during the reign of Claudius. Now, Claudius was the Claudius Caesar. Uh, continue on verse 29. Each of the disciples, according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brothers and sisters who lived in Judea. They did this sending it to the elders by means of Barnabas and Saul. So there was a famine and the disciples, the Christians, the believers all over um, the world, they decided, especially in the church in Antioch, they wanted to send relief assistance to those who were suffering uh, the famine in uh, Jerusalem. And they did this through Barnabas and Paul. And so they went and delivered that. And in Acts 12, 24, uh, it says, but the word of God spread and multiplied after they had completed their relief mission. So they did complete that mission. Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem, uh, taking along John, who was called Mark. So they completed that. Okay? So that was their first journey, uh, was to give relief to the needy believers. Now we will see a little later, that Paul did this again um, uh, at the end, towards the end of his um, missionary journeys. 
he decided to go back to Jerusalem to deliver some help to the believers in there. Number two, Paul's journey was to do the work the Holy Spirit had called them to do. Paul and his companions. Now, in his first missionary journey, uh, Barnabas was his companion. And John Mark, John Mark, the writer of Mark's gospel. But um, in his second and third journey, uh, he was accompanied by a number of other people, including Silas and Timothy. I think Silas and Timothy are the most well-known of his companions, and even Luke, because uh, when Paul um, wrote his letters, most of his letters, he mentioned by name Silas um, and Timothy. So, uh, but they, and uh, the, he, he went do the work the Holy Spirit called them to. Now, the Holy Spirit was very much involved in sending out Paul uh, as a missionary. So, in X chapter uh, X thirteen, X thirteen verses two and three, it says, "As they were worshiping." So, this is the church in Antioch. Now, I um, I mentioned to you before that there are two Antiochs. There is the Antioch in Syria. And there is the Antioch up in Pisidia. So to say, you have to distinguish though between those uh, between those two Antiochs. But the Antioch that we will mostly refer to is the Antioch in Syria because that was the big church, the sending church that sends um, Paul and Barnabas, and even sent Paul in the rest of his missionary journeys. Now they were worshiping in that church, in the church in Antioch. And the Lord um, and the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And after they had fasted, prayed, and laid hands on them, they sent them off. So the Holy Spirit was the ones who set them apart to be sent off to the Gentiles with the gospel. Now, <clears throat> even when they <clears throat> uh, went along uh, and, and did that, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, was also their guide. Right? So in Acts 16, we're told this. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia. Now, this is the second missionary journey of Paul. Uh, they had been forbidden by the Spirit to speak the word in Asia. So some regions, uh, they were forbidden to speak the word of God in there. How do you know that the Holy Spirit is not is forbidding, forbidding you from speaking somewhere? Well, he won't give you an opportunity to speak to those people. And you'd be thankful to God. So it was the same here. Um, Paul uh, and his companions were forbidden to speak the word in Asia. Asia was a, a district, not a city. Asia was where uh, the big city of Asia was Ephesus. When they came to, to Mysia, uh, they tried to go to Bithynia. Bithynia was another big um, <clears throat> uh, district of the Roman Empire. But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So the Spirit, again, uh, did not allow them to move to Bithynia. Uh, passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision in which a Macedonian man was standing and pleading with him, cross over to Macedonia and help, help us. So after he'd seen the vision, we immediately made efforts to set out for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So there you are, the Holy Spirit set them apart, but also the Holy Spirit guided them uh, to which cities and districts they could speak the gospel and which ones uh, they could not speak the gospel. Now, if I may show you quickly the map, um, let me show you the map of Paul's missionary journey, just to have a feel of, uh, of uh, what we're talking about here. So here, here is the map, okay? Um, and, and this is the, the big, um, so this is Paul's mission. So the second journey, in the second journey, so you see this Galatia, Galatia that's Caratia, and that's Bithynia, Bithynia, up there. That's Macedonia, Macedonia, up there. So, and this is Asia, just down here, right? And Mysia, Mysia is there. So Paul, uh, when they, uh, they, they went through these cities, um, and then they were not, they, they tried to get to Bithynia, but uh, the, the Spirit did not allow them to get there. Um, they were forbidden from preaching in Asia. So they went via Mysia, 
uh, and they went to Troas, Taloasi. See, this is Troas in, in the near the near the beach, and there was the vision of Paul of a man who was um, you know um, waving at him from Macedonia. Uh, Macedonia is where the church of Philippi, the Salonica, and Berea. So they were the three churches of Macedonia. Okay? So then they went across to Macedonia. So uh, just to really to, to have a feel of that. So, and then the two Antioch that I was talking about. So this is Antioch in Syria. This is the, the church where Paul and, uh, and uh, Barnabas, this is a sending church. But then they, um, so the first, during the first missionary journey, they went down to Salamis and Cyprus, and then they went up there to Pisidia. Pisidia, you see there? And there's another Antioch up there in Pisidia. See? That's the Antioch, <clears throat> the second Antioch. Let me go back to my um, my text. So, they went according to the, uh, the Holy Spirit, who was uh, setting them apart, sending them off, and guiding them to places where they could preach the gospel. Number three, they were to preach the gospel to the Jews. So um, even though Paul was sent to the to the Gentiles, but he would always preach to the Jews. And this is uh, Acts chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, that is, this is the beginning of their first missionary journey, they went to Seleucia, and there they sailed to Cyprus, arriving at Salamis. They proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. Synagogues, that's the Jewish churches. They also had John, that's the John Mark. So they were preaching their butts. Um, uh, so the gospel they were preaching uh, was the gospel of the resurrection of Jesus. So this is an example of the gospel they were preaching. Uh, for they, uh, David, did, uh, uh, David, after serving God's purpose, in his own generation, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and decayed. But the one God raised up did not decay. So he's talking about the resurrection. Jesus was raised from the grave. He did not decay in the grave. All of us will be will decay in the grave, right? But Jesus didn't because he was raised from the dead. Therefore, let it be known to you, brothers and sisters, that through this man, through this man who was raised from the dead, through Jesus, forgiveness of sins is being proclaimed to you. Everyone who believes is justified through him from everything that you could not be justified from the law of Moses. So they couldn't be justified from the law of Moses, but they, are, they could be justified now by faith in Jesus. So that's the gospel they, they preached. Uh, and then uh, they make disciples in the towns as they went. So Acts 14, 21, after they had preached the gospel in that town and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra to Iconium and to Antioch. Now, these are the cities um, in the first journey. So they returned, they strengthened the disciples. Anyway, so they went to preach the gospel to the Jews, but the Jews refused and they persecuted them. And therefore, number four, they, they turned to the Gentiles. They, they preached the gospel to the Gentiles. And here's, here's uh, Paul. Uh, this is in Antioch in Pisidia, in the second Antioch. Okay, Paul says, uh, Paul and Barnabas boldly replied, it was necessary. So this is because of the opposition from the Jews. They said, it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. So it was necessary that the gospel be spoken to the Jews because it was them that God had promised the Messiah, had promised salvation, has promised the blessing through their ancestors, through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the 12 tribes, right? So it was necessary the word of God be spoken to you first. Since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life, we are turning to the Gentiles. So they turned to the Gentiles because of the rejection from the Jews. For this is what the Lord has commanded us and made you a light for the Gentiles. Now, Gentiles are non-Jews, all of us without any Jewish connection by blood. We are all regarded as Gentiles. So uh, I, made, I, I have made you a light for the Gentiles to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And then we're told when the Gentiles heard this, that is when they heard that Paul is now turning to them, they rejoiced and honored the word of the Lord and all who had been appointed to eternal life believed. So there you are. They, they preached the gospel to the Gentiles uh, and the elect amongst the Gentiles believed, right? God elect 
those should be saved. Now, how do you know that you're elected? You turn to Jesus. He turns you to Jesus so that you will trust in Jesus for your salvation. If you have trusted in Jesus for your salvation, you are the elect of God because we are elected in Christ. So when the Gentiles heard this, that is when they heard that Paul is turning them, they rejoiced and honored the word of the Lord and all who had been appointed to eternal life believed. See, all who have appointed, that is God had appointed people to eternal life and they believed when they heard Paul. Even the hearts of people were opened by God to the gospel amongst the Gentiles. And this is in Philippi, um, and we read in Acts 16, 14, a God-fearing woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth in the city of Diatira, was listening. The Lord opened her heart to respond to what Paul was saying. Yes, indeed, God can open the hearts of people, your heart, my heart, he can open it. Do you know this is the great encouragement for us to keep preaching the gospel because God can open the hearts of people. Um, and so from then on, their audience was always both Jews and Gentiles, but they always faced persecutions from unbelieving Jews who persuaded the Gentiles to persecute them. So we read in Acts 14 too, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poison their minds against the brothers. See, they stirred it up, they poisoned their minds, but then Paul continued to testify to them about, uh, about God, about repentance towards God, and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So Acts 20, 21, I testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus. So that's the gospel. He kept on proclaiming that both to Jews and Gentiles, even though he was persecuted. Number five, reason number five is that Paul was sent out to, to do the signs and wonders Jesus promised would accompany their testimony. So Jesus promised that when they go, the apostles go out there to proclaim the gospel by the power of the spirit, there will be accompanying signs and wonders. So we read in Acts chapter 14, verses 8 in 10, uh, verses 8 to 10, here, here's the first missionary journey. They are in the city called Lystra. In Lystra, a man was sitting who was without strength in his feet, had never walked, and had, had been lame from birth. He listened as Paul spoke. After looking directly at him and seeing that he had faith to be healed, Paul said in a loud voice, stand up on your feet. And he chummed up and began to walk around. Now, if you read through again, see the people in the place, they thought that Paul and, and uh, Barnabas were gods because only gods can bring about these kind of miracles of healing of a lame man. And they, they were about to sacrifice to them and Paul uh, decided to prevent them from doing it. So this was the confirmation that Jesus is pleased with their mission. So when they reported it to the people in Jerusalem, the whole assembly became silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul scribe all the signs and wonders God had done for them among the Gentiles. So this is the confirmation. Paul is for them. You see, uh, even prison doors were opened. See, this is them being imprisoned in Philippi. And about midnight, Acts 16, 25 to 28, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake. The foundations of the jail were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains came loose. So when the jailer woke up and saw what happened, uh, the door, um, he, he threw his sword and was going to kill himself. Well, of course, the story is that he became a Christian. You see, the prison doors were open, hearts were open. So God performed great miracles as they went along preaching the gospel. Number six, Paul's missionary journey was to strengthen and encourage disciples to continue in the faith despite hardships and persecutions. Of course, um, you know, Christians, uh, not only Paul and Barnabas uh, were persecuted, but also believers. Uh, were persecuted locally by the Jews and, and those people. So Paul had then to come back to the churches that he had uh, established and uh, strengthen and encourage them to continue on being Christian 
and not to be discouraged by the suffering. In fact, he said, and this is uh, Acts chapter 14, verses 21 and 22, he said, uh, <clears throat> after they had uh, preached the gospel in that town, make many disciples, uh, they returned to Lystra, to Iconium, and to Antioch. So this is the Antioch, the second Antioch, strengthening the disciples by discouraging them to, uh, by encouraging them to continue in the faith and by telling them it is necessary to go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. You see, it's necessary to go through many hardships. So if you're a Christian, it will be a must for you to go through hardships. Now, if you're not going through hardships, it's because you're still hiding your Christianity under the bush. You really need to make, to make people know that you stand for Jesus, you stand for his word, and you can die because of that. So we must expect to go through many hardships to end up the kingdom of God. In fact, you know, the people in heaven, uh, according to Revelation chapter 7, they have endured great tribulation or great affliction, great suffering for Jesus, and uh, they are in him. So here, yeah, Paul went, or, uh, went along in his missionary journey to encourage disciples to continue in the faith despite hardship. So you see, I mean, this, 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 is, uh, this is a good purpose for us. You know, when we go around, you may encourage people to see, you know, there's difficulty, there is persecution. They will ex expect it. It will be really difficult to live for Jesus in these days. See, now, reason number seven for Paul's missionary journey uh, was to appoint elders, faith fecals. They are to appoint ministers or elders. See, they were called elders or presbyters or overseers. The word overseers in the original language is the word bishop. The word for elders is the word for priest. Uh, it's presbyteros, that's the word in the Greek. Uh, so then Paul was to appoint elders to be responsible for the church. Now, um, in the New Testament, the elder, the priest, uh, the uh, over the bishop, was just the person from, um, from the local church that was both uh, mature in age, so he may be the oldest member, but he was also mature as a Christian. And when they received the Christian, Paul could see that some people were maturing quickly and they uh, they chose those people and, and lay hands on them to continue to be elders of the church. See, the idea of a, a faithful coming from outside to be our faithful was a, a strange notion in the New Testament. Usually it was a local pastor, a local person that was elected and selected by the, the apostles and lay hands on them. And they become pastors and elders of the local church. Uh, to teach them and to encourage them and to protect the church from from uh, false teaching. So that's what Paul says again in X. <clears throat> so X fourteen twenty three, when they had appointed elders for them in every church and prayed with fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. See, they prayed over them and they fast and they committed them to the Lord whom they had believed. So they chose appointed elders uh, in every church. And, and in Acts chapter 20, verses 20, uh, 28 to 31, Paul is speaking now to the elders or to the five cows of the church in Ephesus. And he said to them, be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers. So that's it's the word. Overseers is bishop. Uh, in the New Testament, it, it, it was used interchangeably. Overseers, elders, pastors, they, they were just used interchangeably. They, they mean the same sort of people. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. See, the church of God are people whom God has purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, as Paul is talking now to the to the to the pastors of the church in Ephesus after my departure savage wolves were coming among you not sparing the flock men will rise up even from your own number and distort the truth to lure the disciples into following them so you see uh, he's, he's warning them there will be false teachers from outside the church there will be false teachers arising up within the church this is why the elders 
are the people who are to maintain good teaching in the church. They are to maintain sound gospel teachings and protect the sheep of God from falling away into false teachers and false teaching. So appoint elders to be responsible for the churches. Number eight, to, to take the decisions of the Jerusalem Council to the churches. Now, the very first conference or council of the church uh, that happened in the uh, in, in well in the world happened during um, the time of the apostles, and you can read the account of it in Acts chapter fifteen. Um, so there was an issue that arose. Okay, so here, here we we I'm, I'm going to take you through that. So some men from Judea, belonging to the party of the Pharisees. Now, they may have been Christian, or they may have been Jews who became Christian. They belonged to the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees were the, uh, the strict observer of the law. So this is, listen to Acts chapter 15, verse 5. Now, some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now, who is the them? The them there are the Gentiles. Now, you must remember that the church, the origin of the church on the day of Pentecost, were all Jews. 3,000 people that were converted uh, through Peter's spirit-filled preaching of Jesus on the day of Pentecost, all of them were Jews. Now, so the church was a Jewish thing because Jesus was the Messiah of the Jews. The gospel was the gospel of the Jews. They were the people to whom the promise to Abraham that Jesus fulfilled and the promise to David of the kingdom that Jesus again fulfilled, it was for them. The promises, the gospel was for them. Now, the church grows. Now, we when we get to Acts chapter 4, chapter 5, uh, we're told that um, the, the, the number of the church in Jerusalem grows to 5,000. So there was a huge church, Jewish church. The problem was when Gentiles started to come in. Now, through the persecution of the church in Jerusalem, you remember Stephen, who was killed as the first martyr of the church, and Saul, who was still unconverted at the time. He was the one who was sponsoring the persecution of Stephen. And through that uh, the persecution, the believers from Jerusalem were scattered to all kinds of places. And, and people started talking, telling the gospel to non-Jews, the Gentiles. Uh, there were men from Cyprus and and uh, and and uh, Salamis. Uh, they, they were the guys who's in, in Acts chapter eleven. They started talking to Gentiles. So what do you do with Gentiles now? You know the Gentiles. They are uncircumcised. They're not people of the. They don't belong to Jews. The people of God. So what do you do with them? Becoming Christians, people joining our church. So that was the issue. So these guys, this party of the Pharisees guys, they said. These Gentiles must be circumcised before they became fully Christian. And so, and, and Paul and Barnabas argued strongly against them so that the issue was brought to the apostles. So this is Acts 15, verse 2. After Paul and Barnabas had engaged them in serious argument and debate, Paul and Barnabas and some others were appointed to go up to the apostles and elders in Jerusalem about this issue. So the issue of Gentiles who become Christian, what shall we do with them? Shall we make them Jews first by circumcising them? Uh, what shall we do? Paul and that and his uh, and, and and his colleagues appears to be they they appear to be arguing. No, we should not make them Jews first. Once they receive Jesus, the gospel, they're already fully Christian, and and this is what you can learn from Paul throughout his letters. But anyway, so uh, they went back to Jerusalem and. Um, and so uh, there was a meeting of the church. The whole church meet together to discuss the issue. What shall we do with Gentile believers? Shall we circumcise them? Or shall we just allow them to become Christian and join the church? And, and that's enough. And now Peter is speaking and he says, um, And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them, that is to the Gentiles, by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he also did to us. So Peter's point was this. We should never distinguish 
between the Gentiles and the Jews, because what we have on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is poured out to us Jews, was also experienced by the Gentiles while Peter was speaking to them in the house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. So the Holy Spirit is given to the Gentiles um, just as it was given to Jews, it does seem that there's no distinction. So then he says, uh, Peter continues on, Acts 15, verse 9, he made no distinction between us and them, that is the Holy Spirit, made no distinction between us Jews and them Gentiles, cleansing their hearts by faith. So you see, that's what the, what the Holy Spirit does. It cleanses our hearts by putting faith in our hearts. And then he says, now then, why are you testing God by putting a yoke on the disciples' necks that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? So to, to circumcise them is to put another yoke on their neck. That means we, they as Jews could not keep the law, right? On the contrary, this is Peter continuing on, we believe, that is we the church, we Christians, we believe that we are saved through grace, through the grace of the Lord Jesus, in the same way they are. So he's talking about the Gentiles. So in, 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 in other words, the Gentiles and the Jews are both saved by grace, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're both given the Holy Spirit in the same way. Uh, it, it, it does seem that the Holy Spirit does not distinguish between circumcised Jews and uncircumcised Gentiles. So the whole assembly became silent and listened to, um, um, to Barnabas and Paul describe all the signs and wonders God had done through them amongst the Gentiles. So this is the, the second reason for, uh, for saying uh, that uh, there's no need uh, for the Gentiles to be circumcised, that is to make them Jews first, because as Paul and Barnabas went along and preached the gospel to the Gentiles, God accompanied their, uh, their, their proclamation of the gospel with signs and wonder. That is, there's no distinction because he's, God is approving of them preaching the gospel to the Gentiles and making them believers through the name of Jesus. So, so there you are the two reasons, right? The Holy Spirit was given to both. Um, the signs and wonders are now um, conf confirming that uh, uh, you know that God has approved of the gospel proclama uh, proclamation to the Gentiles. So then the church decided at the end um, that um, what they will do is that uh, we should not cause difficulty to those among the Gentiles who turn to God. And this is uh, this is James. James was the leader of the church in Jerusalem at this time. James, the brother of Jesus. Remember that Jesus appeared to him in 1 Corinthians 15. And this is James um, kind of concluding the, the first conference of the uh, Christian church in Jerusalem. And he said, therefore, in my judgment, we should not cause difficulties for those among the Gentiles who turn to God. But instead, we should write to them to abstain from things polluted to idols from sexual immorality, from eating anything that has been strangled, and from blood. Uh, so, you, so you see that uh, that's what they tell them. Abstain from um, things polluted by idols, sexual immorality, eating and anything that has been strangled, and from blood. So those are the four things they are to abstain from, um, and the, but, they, but they're already Christian, okay? Uh, just by being by faith in Christ. So, then Paul and Barnabas were told to take this decision to the church in Antioch and to other churches. So then the apostles and the elders of the whole church decided to select men who were among them and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. So Judas called Barsabbas uh, <clears throat> and Silas, both leading men among both leading men among the brothers. So they chose <clears throat> four people to take this decision of the church in Jerusalem to the rest of the churches, okay? So Paul and Barnabas and Judas and Silas. You so see, this is a Silas that ends up accompanying Paul in his journey. So that's also part of Paul's journey was to deliver that, the decision of the Jerusalem conference uh, on, you know, whether uh, Gentiles need, uh, needed to be made Jews 
before they became Christian. And so Paul went to the good news. No, they become Christian. And then it, they, they can just abstain from these things, just the sexual immorality, but they're already Christian. There's no need to circumcise them. And then, um, so that's number eight. Number eight is to take the decision of the church, Jerusalem Church Council. Two more reasons. Number nine is to take the collection for the poor amongst the saints in Jerusalem. So Paul, in his missionary journeys, he um, encouraged and he motivated the churches that he set up. They need to collect some money to help those who were poor in the church in Jerusalem. So he, when he decided to go to Jerusalem, one of the reasons why he decided to go to Jerusalem was that. So in Acts 19, 21, he is in Ephesus. And there was a huge riot there. He's, he was he was almost killed in Ephesus. And after these events, so this is what we're told in Acts 19, 21. After these events, Paul resolved by the Spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and go to Jerusalem. After I've been there, he said, it is necessary for me to see Rome as well. So his plan was there. He went to Jerusalem and then to Rome. And then... Uh, they told him on his way to Jerusalem, they told him, you see, that Paul, um, that, that he will be persecuted in Jerusalem, will be even killed in Jerusalem. But Paul said in Acts 21, 13, uh, what are you doing weeping and breaking my heart? For I'm ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Jerusalem was a place where Jesus was killed. And Jesus, you remember, said that all the prophets were killed in Jerusalem. So Paul said to them, look, if at the end I'm killed in Jerusalem, so be it, I'm following my Lord Jesus. Okay? And and <clears throat> in Acts 24, verse 17, we're told, after many years I came to bring charitable gifts and offerings to my people. But while I was doing this, some Jews from Asia found me ritually purified in the temple without a crowd, without any uproar. It is they who ought to be here before you to bring charges. To have anything against me so he was arrested of course but he went to give to deliver some uh, assistance financial assistance to the believers needy believers in Jerusalem. now very important that this is part of our ministries in our churches you know we minister the word but we also minister to the needy amongst our people okay and the last reason why he went to jerusalem was to report to the church in jerusalem what God had done amongst the Gentiles through the gospel in his journey. You remember that in Jerusalem where the apostles, James, <coughs> Peter, and John were considered the pillars of the church. So they were the three big guys of the apostles. So he went to, to tell the report to them uh, that God is with him. And God, seemed, uh, you know, God has affirmed that Paul's ministry to the Gentiles is in accordance with his will. So he, um, he, um, he was ready to die in Jerusalem, uh, but he went there to report to them. So in Acts 21, 19, we read, after greeting them, that is, uh, let me read from, eight, from 18, the following day, that he, they are in Jerusalem now, the following day, Paul went in with us. So Luke is part of this. Luke is part of this, uh, of uh, the, the, the companions of Paul. The following day, Paul went in with us to James, James, the brother of Jesus, was the leader, and all the elders were present. After greeting them, he reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. So he went to report to them, but while he was there, he was arrested. And because they could not um, do justice to his, you know, to his case, they wanted, they really wanted to kill him, right? There was no case against him. And because there was no case against Paul, there was only uh, allegations and accusations without any uh, any basis, Paul appealed to Caesar. He wanted to be taken to his case, to be taken to Caesar so that he may be heard. And, and as you know, Paul died uh, as a prisoner in, in, uh, in there. So uh, the whole city was stirred up. This is Acts 21, 30, 31. The whole city was stirred up and the people rushed together. They seized Paul. This is in Jerusalem dragged him out of the temple and at once the gates were shut they were trying to kill him word went out to the commander of the ready of the of the regiment uh, that all jerusalem was in chaos so paul 
after all his journey, after all these things, so you can you can see they're summarized, preaching the gospel, encouraging the churches to stand firm in the gospel despite persecution, um, deliver the um, decision of the conference in Jerusalem that uh, the Gentiles are saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and not by becoming Jews first. They, they are saved. Um, but also to give, to, to, to deliver the um, uh, relief, the help for those who are needy in the church. In Jerusalem. They're, they're the main things. But of course, you know, he was also journeying according to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was the one who set him apart and guided him. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, he was he went to preach to the Jews, but they rejected him and he turned to the Gentiles. So we must thank God for Paul. It is the teachings of the Apostle Paul uh, that we Gentiles are twisting today because we refuse to listen to our Apostle. For example, the teachings according to, uh, you know, teachings on, uh, on, on women preaching. See, Paul does not permit a woman to teach or preach. We have authority in the Church of God, and yet we ordain women ministers. The teaching, Paul's teaching on head covering on on, the, uh, on men not wearing a head covering, but uh, women wearing a head covering in order to acknowledge that the head of the church is God and under God is Christ and under Christ is the men and under the men are the women. So did you see those two, for example, are the teachings of the apostles to the Gentiles that we rejected today. In our church, we want to keep it. And we want to pray that the, the generations are the generations will continue on to hold on to his biblical teachings. Father, thank you so much for the Apostle Paul. Uh, he risked his life and even died to bring the gospel to us Gentiles. Thank you that eventually the gospel reached out to us in Tonga. And now today, even today, we're Christians because of the work initiated by the Apostle Paul. Thank you that he took, he risked his life to take the gospel to unbelievers. I pray that we too will risk our lives to take the gospel to people outside our comfort zones and even unbelievers. So I pray that you, uh, your blessings be upon us as we continue to serve you wholeheartedly in the church of God by preaching, by living the gospel to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, now, thank you very much for um, 